The pole barn, and basically, um, wait a minute, Charlie, are you wanting to get out? Happy in the car? Okay, Charlie's in the car. He'd he'd rather be sitting here in the car while I'm working than he would be in the house. So I'm okay with that. Anyway, um, I was looking on line and I found someone that had a dismantled carport it was 12 by 18 maybe about 500 bucks he sold that before I could buy it and I looked some more and I saw a guy built carports and I asked him what he would build me a carport for by about the same size maybe about 12 by 20 and asked him to build it without any tin on the roof because I got tin down there I could put on the roof and he hadn't got back to me. And I was out here, I dug a couple holes out front for some trees, for hunting that uh, was cypress, not cypress, uh, crepe myrtles. And then uh, and he just sent me a price, which is not anything. That interrupted my train of thought. Toot, toot. Okay, so he just quoted me a price that would be. Uh, Roughly in line with about, well, it was actually be, it have to be about three times more than I could buy a metal carport for. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to make, I'm going to build my own pole barn, and I'm going to, I'm going to dig with the uh, post hole digger, eight holes here, eight holes here. I'm going to make it roughly about 11 and a half by 20. Um, and put some two by sixes for a roof, not a roof, but a ceiling joists and then some cross parts. And then I'm going to use my metal down there to put metal over it. Then I'm going to metal around it and I put a door back here and a big door. I'll make a big door to kind of like the door I made here for, to go over there. That way I can put my boat in here, I can put the rambler in here or something. Uh, and get it out of the weather and it won't be anything fancy it's just a lean-to garage but it'll be enough um, the price that he gave me assured me or made me be assured that uh, I didn't want to uh, go the way he was talking or the way I was thinking or the way he was thinking or whatever anyway that got me off my train of thought I'm going to go in line and in the house just do a little bit of quick research on some materials I'll be right back I guess the first thing to do is dig a hole and see how much work it takes to dig a two foot hole and whether I want to dig eight of them. I think I can. I think I'm man enough to handle it. I ain't scared of work. I ain't never been. I'm feeling pretty good these days. Down's not too hard. It's been raining a good bit here in Georgia for a while, so. I feel like uh, I'd be that hard to get. So you may notice there's a paint mark on my hoe. That's uh, two feet. So if I go down two feet, put six inches of gravel in the bottom, it gives me a foot and a half in the ground. I'm thinking using eight foot pressure treated uh, four by fours and putting uh, a foot and a half in the ground will leave me six and a half feet tall, which is taller than I am. 
And the way my ground slants here, if I use the same side post on both sides, it'll give me about a foot and a half fall, which will be fine. Uh, although I'm talking 12 foot building, uh, for the sake of my uh, rafters, I'm gonna make it, um, ah, there's the male lady. So what I was going to say was it didn't take me long to dig that hole there. If they all go as easy as that, it be done pretty quick. Now I'm going to go five feet between each one, so there's going to be four poles. Five feet between each one for a total of 20 feet. And then come out here 12 feet and come back. Uh, and that should do it. Okay? Okay. Things I'm kind of aware of all of a sudden is y'all are looking at my backside, which might not be the best, most pleasant thing to be looking at. Maybe what I ought to do is set the camera up there and have you looking down where you can at least see the front side. I think the front side of me might be more, I don't know if it seemed prettier or not, but it seemed like it'd be possibly more interesting to look at than the back side of me. I can't guarantee that's true, but it's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to take, uh, somebody suggested uh, some pretty good names. Joe, who gave me this tripod, suggested Escape Pod. Now he's, keep in mind, he's from Joliet, Illinois, and they got a, Illinois, Illinois. I don't think you're supposed to say Illinois if you're not... You know, because people from there, I don't think they say. Anyway, there's a prison out there, Joliet Prison. And he says it's escaped from there, so it's an escape pod. So this is my escape pod right here. This is this tripod. My escape pod. Let's see now, y'all y'all running? Y'all watching? Yeah, you are. Maybe that's a little better. Hole number two is coming up. I thought about putting on my big boots, and I still might. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. So far, the ground ain't too bad to stand on, and it's wet enough to dig, which is pretty much ideal digging condition, I believe. My other thinking about putting it right here is that having these posts in the ground, I don't think this is ever going to shift, but if it did, it shift right up against this post, which would uh, hopefully prevent it from falling down the hill and all. I guess with all the rain we just had down here, if it didn't move down, it probably ain't never gonna. <clears throat> of course, it's got that big concrete slab on top of it. I seem to feel like it's probably going to stay put.
Okay, so I got him to leave this so he can go on about his business. I'll be out here in the, tomorrow. We'll get that carburetor cleaned out. I know that motor will run. We uh, splashed a little dab of uh, gas in the pistons, and she fired up and run good um, till she burned up the gas. So uh, in the morning, I'll get out here and uh, we'll clean that carburetor out. I just left it soaking. I had some uh, some old carburetor gas treatment stuff. And I just poured it all inside of there. I figured let let things get loosened up and give me a chance to get cleaned up and, and enjoy some time with Honey Babe and make videos and fun stuff like that. We'll get her going. We'll get her going tomorrow. Appreciate y'all hanging out with me. Y'all been a good sport about everything. In spite of everything, you're still here. Can't imagine why, but you know some people just gluttons for punishment. So. Yes, y'all are. That's okay, though. I like people like that. I like people who can take it. I don't know. Did I show you? Did I show you? Let me. While I got you, while I got your attention, let me show you. I got the shed. I got the uh, shed. I got the. I got the whole barn all figured out. Uh, see, this is. This is the rambler sitting inside of where the pole barn is going to be. Now you see I got plenty of room to walk down the side. You can see the pole holes right there. Plenty of room to come around behind it back here. See, this is right where the back wall is going to be. I'll close this up. And then there's plenty of room on this side, see, for me to walk around it here. And then the front end of it's going to be right here, right about where that pipe comes out, right in there. So there's plenty of room to walk all the way around it. There's room to put some shelves on the walls, put some things up. There's my wood right there. That came while me and Butch was in there messing around with that boat. And uh, got some concrete to go in these post holes. We'll uh, be putting that in a few days. Uh, I'm going to grab my tape measure and take it inside because... I learned a long time ago if you let rain water rain on your tape measures it makes them it makes them all snarly they don't like it they don't work good anymore so so that's a pretty old boat right there yeah it is yeah it is okay then So I was thinking I'd like to get these uh, posts in the ground. Uh, today, while it's not raining, it's funny. I looked on the weather the other day, and you'd have thought that it was about to start pouring any moment. But it ain't. In fact, it's looking pretty nice. So I thought, well, I'll get these poles in the ground while it's not raining. Maybe get some of that cement packed in around them. Uh, who knows what else I could get done today. You know, like somebody's running a sawmill over there. That may be my neighbor. He's got a stump grinder. I bet it makes a racket. I think I'll, uh, pull a rambler out. Uh, it's a little misty. Might even be a little frozen. It, it got a little chilly. It got a little chilly last night. You know what? I'll set my camera over here on this boat. I'll let y'all sit over here and I'll go over there and I'll fire up the rambler and get it out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to go in the house and get me some screws and screwdriver gun and uh, a level. Set each one of them so that it's level straight up and down. 
and then uh, put some concrete around the base of them and then let that sit and dry today while I work on finish working on Butch's carburetor on his boat motor and we got to go to town honey baby is uh, putting her table runners and pictures and things that she made in a little local sales store we have a store up here that sells local crafts and things and I'm going to go do a video on that because they're opening for the season on Saturday. So I want to do a little video thing put up on Facebook to show, you know, the local people, hey, this is happening. Come on down, buy some stuff, <laughs> something like that. I'll be right back. I get that, uh, I get the level and the screwdriver gun and all that. Come back and we'll, uh, we'll talk some more and have some more fun here. Hold the joy. So what I've just done is I've leveled these two posts here on the end, uh, kind of braced against each other. Now this post looks crooked, but it's only because the retaining wall is a little crooked, which you would expect it to be um, because of the pressure of that gravel on it. That's what I was talking about the other day when I said by putting these posts here, I also give a little extra support to that retaining wall should it ever decide to slip um, now what I did on these ones uh, this one here I can pull in because it will slide on the ground this one here it's hard to push that wedge end uphill so what I did was I put a board under it so it would slide I'm gonna do the same thing on the next one then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna I'm gonna set the first one level what I could do and I may do is get a little piece of board and run it over to that retaining wall and brace that against that but uh, we'll see but uh, first of all let's see how we, how close we can get it uh, using another method and then we'll kind of go from there so the next thing I want to do is uh, bring bags of cement mix around here water mix I'm going to fill the holes up with them and uh, I'm going to go from there that'll be a little bit uh, labor intensive but uh, I can handle it I thought about you know I put that trailer ball on here which is fine for getting the boat out but then I can't hook my little lawnmower trailer to it they don't have a trailer ball like that. But I think for the little, no more than I'm doing, I'm just using 40 pound bags. So I think I'll just use this little cart, bring them around here. One bag at a time, pour them in. I always like to go around and eyeball everything, make sure it looks straight. These poles will be subject to be, you know, adjusted a little as we go. It's kind of like when we did Josh's uh, porch, we had to, uh, kind of make some final adjustments I'll, I'll also go ahead and re recheck my corners over here before I and I'm not so much thinking about this corner because this corner is uh, the side we've been talking about the other corner here After this, it'll be time for breakfast or something. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is a good day. So I got a couple things in the works today. Besides this, I wanted to get this done because I wanted in my legs to have time to set up. I took this one brace down because the end of it was sticking down in the edge of the hole and I didn't want it to create a path for water to run down in the post hole, so that's why I moved it. I checked that corner, it's still straight. Straight enough. So what I'm gonna do is just let the water hose sit and run into each hole for a while. Uh, I'm gonna go and make a, I wanna make a kind of a short, succinct, but interesting video about the store where Honey Baby's got her stuff for sale. It is kind of an awesome place. Um, and it's a place where that I'm built, willing to bet hardly anybody knows exists. Uh, it's kind of in an alley in an old cotton storage warehouse uh, in the middle of town. And, uh, and there's nothing in there that you can buy in China. Uh, well, that may not be true because there might be some things that people use as part, pieces and parts. But just about everything in there is hand, handmade, hand decorated, really nice stuff. So I'm going to go in the house and work on that. I've still got Butch's carburetor to fix, but I figured the longer it soaks, the better. And I need to go get my, need to go over to Butch's house and download some program stuff because uh, I've got a, got a printer that won't print because it needs a program and I can't get the program because I don't have the internet. So I figured I'd do that over at his house. But... Enough talking about it. I'm going to put the tools away. It, it may, they said it was going to rain today, but it sure ain't showing no signs of it. But uh, I'm going to put the tools away and then uh, go in the house and do that video thing I was telling you about. And, uh, and y'all get to see it when I get done. Oh, the joy. I, get, I guess I could sit y'all kind of right here. Uh, I believe you can see what I'm doing. From there, and we'll go up on the next one. One of the reasons for not bracing this here against this wall is because they've also got to be leveled this way and that way. So if I braced it here, I felt like I could temporarily brace it, but then I'd have to come unbrace it later. They're pretty good about just about sitting in place. That one is dead on on both sides and it looks pretty good. So. I'm gonna watch quicker than the first one. I'll check them both again, then I'll put a screw in the bottom of this one here. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. Put a screw down the bottom. Now these boards will eventually become my roof choices. Rafters, joists, it's a, uh, it's a pole barn, it's a lean-to pole barn, so it's, uh, rafters, joists, they're all the same thing <laughs> in that situation right there. I guess you call them, technically you call them joists, I suppose.
Alrighty then, I think we got her level and braced up pretty well. Hey, look at this. Yeah. Birds are flying. Things is happening. Oh, life is good here. Uh, along those lines, uh, I started pole barn the other day. And then I took a day or two off to fix uh, Bush's boat. And then it was a rainy day in there. And then there was a church day. And a Super Bowl day. No, Super Bowl day and church day. It was the same day. Anyway, with all that done behind us. See if I can just settle in here while I do important things. Uh, I'm gonna get up there and pull down all the all the wood I put up on the brace it up while I pour the concrete around the legs. And then we'll be able to start the process of putting some rafters and things like that. Oh, it's going to be a good day. I can feel it in my bones. Bless my heart. Bless your heart, too, if you got one. <laughs> Whee. Let's see, now, I'm going to want me some gloves. Here's some. I ain't cleaned up my mess from working on Butch's carburetor very good so far. Oh, and, uh, I need to talk to you all about my snapper comet pull cord thingy, but I ain't gonna get to that yet. I'm gonna walk away from that until I reach a point where I'm ready to discuss that some more. What I do with my gloves now? There's one back here. Is that a right and a left? Mm, yep, that's a, that's a, Left and a, a right and a right. Don't you hate it when you get two right-handed gloves. Does that ever happen to y'all? Okay, gloves. Here they are. I'm a lawnmower. Okay. <laughs> so I put up all these boards to kind of hold everything in place while I was uh, working on everything. And uh, now that everything is cemented into the ground, we can go from there. Now, my, my, my friend, my neighbor Wendell came by and he was talking about these poles being cemented in the ground. And he said, you know, they'll rot that way. And I said, well, they'll, they'll rot that way if you don't put any gravel under them, because it means water will creep up inside the centers of them. And I uh, showed him, you know, and talked to him about where I'd put gravel in there, and he'd say, oh, he said, I should have done that when I did them up yonder. You know, you may remember we got a big building up the road and the legs is rotting out. I wonder who built that. He didn't know then that they didn't put enough pressure treatment in that wood to keep them good if they was in the dirt. They used to, but then they stopped because of environmental reasons. Anyway, here we go. We just got much pile of wood here.
Okay then, that's your basic pole barn structure, right there. We're now in the pole barn. This is low enough where I can touch it. I didn't try to build it super tall. For money saving purposes, uh, I made it short enough to use the minimal amount of wood. My boat or my rambler would clear just fine going in here. So there really wasn't a necessity to make it much taller. Next thing I'm gonna do is get a saw. I'm gonna saw off the top edges of these pieces that are sticking up a little bit. And then we can move on to running. Well, first thing I'm going to do is put a tarp over it for water protection, and then we're going to run some cross pieces, and then uh, put some tin on it. Oh, the joy. I'll go get me a suitable saw for that. I may use, I may use a chainsaw because it's probably quicker than, a, than my little battery powered buzz uh, which I had forgotten <laughs> that I haven't screwed down this end yet. And I want to I want to put the cross pieces on it to line up the ends up on the high side before I put the screws in the low side. And I also want to cover this thing with a tarp. So, I'm going to start from this end and work my way down. I'm just going to bring a big old 12 foot board up here. Run it down the ends long ways. Oh, the joy. I think we're making progress, y'all. Now I'm gonna nail these in down through here. Use that high beam up there, the one I just put up to line these up. I believe now, if I look down through here, they all look like they lined up very well. I think that was the right way to go.
What an amazing pretty day. I went in to get me some tea and a fresh battery for the camera. And figured we'd uh, walk back out here and uh, take a look at where we're at and put up some more of these stringers across here. Holy joy. You're looking good. Hmm. You're looking mighty fine. Yes, sir. Looking mighty fine. Well, I figured my boardage wrong. I did the same thing when I was figuring my post. I forgot to allow for an extra post on each end. And in my boardage this way, I need another 2x6 to run down in there. I also need a band to hang the uh, tin on. So I think what I'm going to do, the little local lumber company is good about delivering stuff. Um, and I think if I order uh, two tube of 12s and uh, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, seven, eight, one to four, I believe that'll be enough to tell, bring it out. I'm pretty good about that stuff. So I hear a vehicle coming. Maybe a delivery truck. I ordered a surprise for Honey Baby. I think that's a vehicle coming. Sometimes I hear cars out on the road. Sounds like they're coming here, but they're not. I think the road must run down across this way. Sometimes I hear them sound, oh, they're right there, but they're not. Okay, so it's a good time to kind of rest a little. I'm a little tired. That's a good start. Maybe I should figure out my boardage. See, I could do one, two, I could do three, two by twelves over here. Well, I got one. I do two more two twelves. Let me get a piece of paper and start writing this down. Good morning, world. This is how it is today. Um, as many of you knew, know, I had a Pretty nice little Ford pickup truck. And, uh, right about the time I was leaving, the local one of the local preachers I know wrecked his, and he does a lot of farm work also. And he needed a truck, but he just really couldn't afford one, and he was having trouble getting the insurance to pay for it. So I said, "Well, I'm leaving. You just take my truck and use it while I'm gone." And he said, "Well, would you sell it to me?" And I said, "I laughed. I said, no." Not unless the good Lord provides me with something else to drive while I'm, you know, to replace it. Well, no sooner did I get home to Maine until I discovered that uh, by some strange circumstances I had acquired a Jeep Cherokee that ran and drove and seems to operate real well. So I thought, doggone Lord, you called my bluff there, didn't you? So I got back down here and I was thinking, well, now how do I go get me some wood? I ain't got my pickup truck. I did have this trailer. Now, this is a, a trailer that I bought right after I got down here for some light work. and pull it with that Prius pretty well. And uh, 
I'll, I'll let Bobby borrow it while I'm gone because, well, I'll let him borrow it anytime he wants. He, he hauls hay home with it for his horses. This particular piece of metal right here was a leftover piece from where I was making shed, uh, shells in Honey Baby's shed. And, you know, I, I was looking around this morning thinking, well, what am I going to use? Because this tailgate is mounted in such a way where it won't come off and means it's hard to put something like lumber on that. And I, a lot of times I, I sort of challenge God, which you could also say having faith and say something like, okay, God, so, so you had me sell my truck to that preacher, man. So how am I going to get lumber now? And I was looking around for something I could put across the back of that trailer and, I spied this thing leaning up against the wall in there and I brought it out here and it fit perfect. I mean, look how it fits. It just, see, this is, this is the piece of the trailer here and this little side piece that turns down goes right in there and, uh, got a little bit across the top there and same thing over here. It fits right in there and I just put a little strap across there to hold that. And then I was able to lay my lumber. That's 12 foot piece of lumber on a six foot trailer. So I got, about two and a half feet hang over in the front and about three and a half feet on the back and that that went down the road real good so that's just a good example of how the lord will challenge you to have faith that he'll get you through if you if you do what he wants you to and and maybe if you don't but in my case he just proved it to me today so what i got here there's two 12 foot tube sixes that are gonna go right up here in the middle of my little bit of roofage right there. And I've got six of those one befores that are gonna go around this. And that's what I'm gonna hang my tent on. And I got two more tube sixes that's gonna go across the back. And that's where I'm gonna put my tin on the back back there. I'm gonna attach it to that. So, um, I was trying to come up with how much I have spent on this so far. I believe it's about 178 bucks for this wood here. And I spent another 61 for that wood. So what does that get us up to? About 240-ish, 250-ish. And I got a pile of 50 sheets of old tin back there that I gave $5 a sheet for. That's 250-ish. So I got about $500, I think, in the building. And this is going to be a building with a top and with walls. Oh, one more thing I did. Y'all remember that signboard material that I've used around here? You can, you can buy it. And uh, I put some down. I've used it in a lot of places. I, I used it inside Honey Baby's She Shed there. But I put some down on the ground back here where I parked the snapper. It's done an awesome job of keeping me from having to deal with any kind of muddy floor or anything if it does if i do get water running through it kind of runs down under it or over it but uh you know it's better than a dirt floor so i got enough to go over the top of this and come down on this high edge here see out here i'm going to have a lip that'll come out with my tin overhanging water won't run uphill but over there it could run back into the building so i'm gonna have enough to cover this whole top turn down on the edges here and, um, you know, have about two feet of it hanging off over there on the side. And then after I put that up there, I'm going to put my tent on top of that. So I'm going to kind of give this an extra dose of waterproofing because the tin that's back there is used tin. Somebody's already drove nail holes in it. And so by putting that, by putting that plastic, that, uh, heavy duty, 11 gauge plastic up there if any water gets in that it'll run out either end of it and run off that's my plan that's my whole that's my plan is i think it'll work or it should run off to the sides or something it should run somewhere but I'm, i don't want it running down on my car so we're gonna try that and we'll see how that works all right that's enough of a preamble here i believe i can move on from there and uh, start attaching some boardage up there so i'll stop talking at about this point and i'll Go get my screwdriver gun or tape measure and some screws and we'll just, we'll just move on with what we're doing here. Oh yeah. I noticed yesterday I started out and my knees were so sore. And by the end of the day I'd forgotten all about my knees. And uh, somebody said, you really need to take it easy. You don't work too hard. And I'm beginning to think that working too hard is the only thing that's keeping me going. <laughs> I think if I sat around and took it easy very long, I wouldn't be able to do anything much for long. So, 
All right, let's get this thing on strap, my kitty. And, uh, you know. I think I'm just going to leave this here to sit while I get up on the top of the building over here. Uh, I don't know if I can set y'all up here. It would make a more interesting view. And I guess I could. Since I'm working on that piece down out there in the middle. So if y'all will agree to sit still and not fall off of there, then I'll agree to let you sit there. And if you fall off of there and get broke, I can't really afford to fix you. So y'all just don't be messing around and doing nothing dangerous, okay? Now we're getting the drill gun. I think it's over down there somewhere. Oh, the door. What I might do here <clears throat> before I go any further is go ahead and put up my outside band pieces because I'm going to need some to cut some little bits where these things join together out here in the middle and uh that way I'll have my saw out, I'm going to get my saw out to do that with. And then I'll have some little scrap pieces I can use to tie those ends, those centers together like that. So I ought to go grab my screwdriver gun and my tape measure. Shouldn't have left it out there. That's the way it goes sometimes. You just do things and you see, dang, what I do that for? Dang, dang I say. And then you say, dang again. Sometimes, sometimes I do anyway. I could sit y'all over here just just for a little bit and see how that works. That's the kind of view you get from up there when I go do a couple things here. I see y'all looking off down toward the lake. I bet y'all want to go fishing. Y'all yeah. are gazing off toward the lake or something. I ain't over there. I'm in here. Although, if this weather holds up, I will be. I will be over there after a while. Better believe I will. Oh yeah. Gotta get you warmed up when you start. Do a little work. Which is a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Uh, I need to go get me a pencil. And, oh, I don't know. What else? Maybe I could use some smaller screws for what I'm doing over here. I'll grab some of them too. I'll just hold my place for me until I get back. There we go. That's better. The cooler. The cooler shirt on here. I'm just taking down some of these boards I had up here for props. I had boards up here that I could prop my rafters on. Oh, the joy. Pretty good board here. I could use this right over there. 
where I'm going. I'm going to put y'all in the uh, witness relocation program and relocate you to this angle so you can continue to see the crimes and then I'll put the report on them later. That's what I think. That's what I think. See now, I might want to cut this before I put it up. Sometimes smartness occurs in my head, and sometimes I realize that I might ought to cut that before I put it up. Cut it right there. It'll be the proper cutting location for that. So. I'm going to take that down, I'm going to get me a level to draw a line with, I'm going to get me a saw, and we'll go over on that chair and use it for saw hold. Yeah. While I'm going around there to get that level, I'll tell y'all a, a funny story on myself. At least I think it's funny. Uh, but you got to promise me you won't tell 63 on Impaler. If he knew what I'm fixing to tell you, he'd think I was getting senile. But uh, the other day I was out here doing some work over yonder. I needed to get up high so I could put some screws into something. You all are like way up in the sky. I'll stop that. So here I was needing to get up to a high place to put some screws into something. I didn't have a ladder, so I went and got a chair. You know, you've probably seen me if you've seen some of them videos. I climbed up in that chair to put them boards up. I remember thinking, dang, I wish I had a ladder. Now, the funny thing is, I have a ladder. I have three ladders, and they're out there in the garage, just sitting there waiting for me. But I temporarily forgot that I had a ladder, and I wound up doing this building work in a chair of a ladder. I'm over here. Yeah, so that's what this camera does. Sometimes it'll follow me, but it loses me. So let's try. It looks like you're still looking at me though. Okay, we'll trust the camera. Trust the process. But anyway, don't tell it to 63 and Pilot because he'll be he'll be joking me about getting old and losing my losing my facilities and stuff. I think he thinks I'm younger than I am, but he ain't. He might be. But even if he is, I don't, want to, I don't want him to take credit for it. We just keep that to ourselves. We just keep that to ourselves. Y'all don't be telling now. I, I wouldn't have told you if I didn't trust you. I trust you not to give away my secrets. You don't be telling him what I said about forgetting that I had a ladder. Because that would... That would reflect negatively on my competence. 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 Put the safety glasses on. Them safety glasses that Eric Polson gave me a while back. I didn't. Maybe next time. Right, let's see if we can get y'all refocus my kid. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what y'all are looking at. I can take this little piece that I cut it off over here and, uh, and I can uh, reattach my it. Make me some little pieces out of that. Little pieces to uh, join those other pieces with. Good idea not to cut the saw cord. Unless you unless you work with Bill. You don't want him to make you work so hard. I did that one time. I cut my cut my saw cord so I could get a break. Oh. Y'all are looking the other way now. Still don't tell him I did that either. Okay. I gotta keep the secret. I might be 
reaching the point where I'm ready to change into a different shirt when it has a, a higher coolness factor. Might have to collect up my other shirts, bring them around over here and set them on the John Deere tractor while I'm out here working so that I can raise my coolness factor. Coolness factor is something that should not be underrated. Not ever. Oh, oh. I'm gonna use different screws for this part. Using little screws for this part. Okay then, all of my top pieces are fastened down. I could put the roof right on it, but I want to put that plastic thing, or at least try it, see if it's gonna. You know, I don't, I don't want it to sit up there and catch water and have water pockets. I think about the only way to figure it out is just to put it up there and see. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring it up here and kind of move it out here, roll it out. It'll give us a chance to see what's on the billboard side part. No. I'll move my chair ladder. Not going to be So now, pull up and drop cord. It's always kind of fun to see what's on these things because there's no way of knowing they don't tell you and they, and they don't sell it to you by what's on the picture. So, you know, it's always kind of fun to see. Ooh, I wonder what I'm going to get today. One we got in the potting shed is some kind of Arabian or Japanese or something sign. So, let me see what this one is. Well, now the mystery is unveiled, unveiled, revealed, re-unveiled, veiled. <laughs> Believe it, I've got a funeral home sign. All right, it says, coming soon, Chicago. I guess a funeral home business would do a good business in Chicago. A lot of people die up there. From what I hear, re Past room, pre-arrangement services, obituary services, floral arrangements. Yeah, so they do it all. So, y'all go up to Chicago, get killed. These folks here, they'll, they'll take care of you. So do I want these faces looking down on me, or do I want these words looking down on me? I think I'll put the faces. Does it seem rude, rude to be walking on the faces? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Could be. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think I care. I'm going to let it go, whichever way it goes. It seems like it'd be easier to put it up from right where it's at. Uh, let's, uh, what does this say over here? Somebody and Sons. Leak. <laughs> Leak and Sons. Okay. So, let's, uh, let's line this end up with that end and we'll cut it up here. And... And then we'll uh, go from there. I'll go get me a, a sharp implement to cut it with. 
I'll drape it up on there and see if I can get some staples in my staple gun to work. Holy joy. Clock right there might have made me feel more tighter than anything else I've done so far. <laughs> That's kind of hard. All right, let's see if we can get one end of it up onto there. Scoot it across and then roll it out. Maybe I'll try setting y'all up here for this fun part. I sometimes have moments where I wish y'all were here. So if you could give me a hand with some of this stuff. <laughs> this is one of them. One of them moments. I know you would too. If you was in reach. I know you every one of you. Well, maybe not every one of you, but most of you. I'll show you if you could, you would. Y'all are good folks. I don't care what anybody says. Car, let me know. I'll get it loose for you. Huh? No. You... No, I got. I went in to work out, but as you can see, I'm covered with thread, which means I've been sewing instead. <laughs> Dang! You gave up working out for sewing. Yeah. <laughs> Such a sacrifice. <laughs> eh? No, yeah, there was just so many. I just can't resist. It's like ah, ah, ah. So you're gonna cover this with tin? Eventually, when you get to that point. Yeah, that's the plan. Door is. Is this the whole piece that you bought? Oh, uh, no, it's half of it. Oh, there you go. There's the other piece. The other half's going to go on the floor. Awesome. Yeah. That way we won't be walking in the dead mud. Huh? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, you're having fun, too. It is kind of fun. <laughs> kind of an interesting challenge. To we get. like putting things together just in different ways. I think it's true. Yeah. <laughs> we like very much, you know, I don't know anybody's ever done this. So that makes it even more fun, you know? <laughs> yeah, there you go. My thinking is that the old tin had the nail holes in it. That what? The old tin. Used tin has nail holes in it. Oh, does it? Yeah, because it's used. Ah, it's that's true. Yeah, it was used. <laughs> it's been put up and taken down. Ah. So, makes sense to me to have something to catch the water before the water comes through it. You have enough tin to do this whole outside area? Yep. Wow. Pretty sweet. Good job, honey. Mm. <laughs> See this side, water's obviously gonna run downhill. On this side, the tin will hang over, the water won't run back uphill. So up here it would, so by overlapping this, the tin, any water that runs down it won't run inside the building. Yeah. So I have tin on this wall also. On this wall. Yeah. Let me see the value of this. I'm gonna get up here before that wind okay. kicks it up. Or just down there? I don't think it'll, I think I'm going to have to come and uh, move the air compressor to get it to make it this far. Uh, 
I think the hose is stretched that far. So what I'll do is I'll set the air compressor down over here. Pass it out through the hole. You can catch it if you want. Good job. Just in time. <laughs> Now we have the semblance of a roof over our head. Pull pretty snug. Now the trick is gonna to be to lay tin up on there without depressing the plastic. What I mean by that is I don't wanna make little pockets, little low spots in the plastic where water will get in there and build up into a pocket and sit. Cause if I do that, then I'll have to figure out a way to drain the pockets out. I think as it is with the tin on it, Probably won't get a lot of water coming through. And what we do get coming through, I believe, will probably run off. And the tin is down there behind that insulation. If you look over that silver trailer, you see that yellow stuff. Well, the tin is down in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unload this wood off of here. I could unload it or I could just spread it out because it'd make a nice little platform for the tin to sit on. Then I'm going to back down there and I'm going to move the insulation and, uh, and then I can load, start loading that tent up on here. Now this is, well, I got, I got some overhang here. What this overhang is, is I just had a little bit more lumberage than I needed and I decided, well, rather than cut it off, let's just let it hang out. And what I may do is just run tent out to the edge and put a little brace up here. That way when you're coming down here to get into the garage and you open the doors, uh, you get a little shelter to be under. Um, before I move any tin, I might wanna just cool off. I got a little warm doing that. Oh, the other thing is this stuff here, that's going in here. So what I, other thing I can do before I go in, cause it might be about to rain. So to keep that from getting wet, is I could move all this stuff that's in the floor here out. Go ahead and drag this piece in here. Cause it's gonna be, Kind of like a floor, sort of like that over there. So, I may wind up trimming this, but I'm not sure. What my what my uh, how I'm gonna do, or how I wanna do it. Uh, I'm gonna uh, just take a few minutes and give some thought to what I got going on here. What I can do if I wanted to is uh, just pull this downhill and wherever your pole is, just cut a notch there so that I move this up to the edge of that wall. So that any water that does come over will run right on out of here. Down here I might have a strip left over. It's about, uh, well, let's see, this piece is 14, this is 12, so I might have a couple extra feet down there that I could take off. And you can always use a piece of this stuff or something. I use it for gardener, gardening and landscaping and all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, Ain't no rush about deciding on that. Uh, I feel good about what I've already did today. Feel good about what I did, what I done. Sure do. Sure do. Nice thing about going back here to get this tin today is that it's cool enough so that the snakes won't be out. They say it's going to rain probably day after tomorrow, so it'd be a good idea to get it out from back there today while I can get back in there. Uh, I think I'll just spread this wood out on the trailer and back it right down in there and slide the uh, insulation over and then just load up as much of that tin as I can stand to handle in one day. Probably all of it. It's not that heavy. sheet at a time. Oh, the joy. Get my gloves. B 
be nice to put a couple of pieces of tin up on top of this to keep it from blowing away. I think I'll just take this off. I might not hurt just put it right up under here. I guess if we lay it right up under there, it'll help keep that stuff from blowing around too. Oh, the joy. I think I left a few pieces on top of that to kind of hold it down in case I don't get any tin up on it today. <clears throat> hold the joy. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Grab a little fun car. These have bad spots on them, but I've got enough. And the shed is short enough where I can cut out the bad stuff. And the other thing is, some people use this for decoration. Like uh, I've seen a lot of antique things made with some like bird houses with little tin roofs. So little pieces that you cut off you can often find a new life on top of a piece of artwork. I'll see Bigfoot sneaking up behind me. Let me know, okay? That may be about all I'm going to need. I think I might take what I got up there and start with that and then uh, decide whether I want to, if I want to come back and get more up there later. Rather take it all up there and then bring some of it back because I'm not doing all four sides. I'm only doing the roof, one side, the back side, and part of the side on the other side. So. Okay, let's go with what we got for now. And then we can come back to whatever we want to come back to later. Here, probably all do is go around and bring the floor jack and jack it up rather than try to lift that trunk with all that weight on. And then just let her sit right here till, till we're ready for it or whatever. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> oh, good job. It's been a pretty good day. I've enjoyed it already. We got a little bit done, so it feels good. Looks pretty good. So I'll pick up my tools and stuff and uh, put everything away. We'll call it a day for today, I think. I think so. That's a good place to stop. There's a day or two, we'll be able to back the boat in here. Oh, joy. Okay, let's go in. It's enough for one day. I'm going to start putting some tent up on the roof and screwing it down. Oh, and what I'll be doing is kind of looking through this and finding pieces of tin that are in better shape for example, here's one with a bad end on it, so I might cut the bad end off. It's going to be so that one piece of tin won't go the entire length of the roof. So, 
it's uh you know if i do wind up cutting an end off i'll probably still have plenty plus i can take a piece like this one and cut this off and where the walls are only about seven feet tall i can still use what's left to fit in there hmm i'm gonna need some gloves this morning so might as well go get me some oh boy you where the good stuff starts happening yeah, it is Well, it's raining, and I'm kind of okay with working in the rain, but I'm not okay with y'all being out there. Because y'all are too expensive to be getting wet and getting ruined because I left you out in the rain. So, I'm going to stick y'all in here somewhere. Maybe I'll put you over there where the John Deere is. The roof. I'm trying to put uh, <laughs> screws and various and sundry different places. What I'm thinking here is if we go uh, like five feet, if I take a, these pieces, these 10 pieces are 10 feet long. So if I cut a bunch of them five feet and overlay these ends, they're up here. And that'll get us well over uh, where they need to go and get us to a, uh, a point out there where there's a uh, something to put a screw into 
So, we're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, we're going to need a dozen pieces five feet long. So that's my mission. That's the next thing on the list. Go cut me some tin. A dozen of them. Five feet long. Okay, okay. And some of these pieces that are uh, sitting over here on the trailer, they've got a good end on them. Like this one right here. That's a good end. I took it out because of that hump in the middle. And because it was crushed up along the track there, but uh, I can get me a good five foot piece out of that. I might could split that one and straighten it out a little bit and get two pieces, you know, out of it. Uh, we'll see. I'm gonna bring that table, sit it right about here, so that I can pull this off the pile, kind of set one end on the table. Get my grinder. I think I got a cord that'll stretch this far. Maybe I'll work them off that trailer. <laughs> the the uh, cord reaches it. And actually, that might be a pretty good place to go. Credit where credit is due. I'm wearing my Eric Polston bifocal safety glasses. Don't I look handsome in them? Hey Eric. Hey Connie. Looking forward to seeing y'all soon. We need to set a date. I love y'all. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go see what that one does. Well, that worked out pretty good. I'm actually taking a five foot piece and putting it on the top and then taking the other piece and turning it down. And it slips down between the the uh, cardboard and the uh, retainer wall. And uh, I think that works pretty good. And a lot of times the end is bad on the, on the piece that I'm not using on the roof, but it because it slips down behind the wall, it doesn't matter. I like this one. I'll walk over here. I like that though, because I like that a lot saving me some tin there and even though i got a bit of it it ain't free and i don't want to waste it so see this one's got a bad end that could go down like that too uh -huh. and this one here this is the wrinkly one but yeah it's kind of like that mm, yeah. Thank you. 